guys, welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. My name is Tila, and in today's video, we're going to be painting gouache winter bouquets directly in Procreate. I'm going to show you how I choose my colors to simulate depth. We're going to integrate realistic shadows, and I'm going to share how to export your artwork as a transparent PNG so you can use it on all of your future craft and stationary projects. I'm using a screen size canvas at 300 dpi. I've provided the color palette that we're using for free. It's right in the video description, so let's get started. The intention of this bouquet is to create a graphic that we can reuse later on for different stationary items for the holidays. So in order to change the resolution of your canvas, it's just so much easier to just create a brand new canvas that's screen size. But when you do that, if you go to the wrench and then go to canvas, canvas information, and then under dimensions, you can see it brings it in at 132 dpi, which is not as much as we need it if we ever plan to print whatever we create on this canvas. So we need to change that. And in order to do that, all you want to do is in the same category, the wrench, canvas, just hit crop and resize and then tap on settings. And right here where it says DPI, you can change this to 300 and then hit done. So that's a really easy hack to increase your resolution, but you have to do this at the very beginning. If you wait until your illustration is already complete, it's too late. So just make sure you do it at the beginning. All right, we're going to be using two different brush sets for this. The first brush set is my Winter Bouquet Maker. It has pre-made bouquet compositions that all you have to do is stamp them in and then paint them in. So that's what we're going to do. There are 10 in the pre-made category, and then I also released five bonus pre-made compositions. So those are in the bonuses category. And then if you want to add anything to it or create your own, all the same elements can be found in the elements category. So I'm going to head into the bonuses and I'm going to be using pre-made bonus number one for this project. And let me get black selected and just tap on your canvas. I'm going to increase the size of this and find a size that's going to fill this pretty comfortably. That feels good and just pop it right in here. I'm going to be painting everything in using my Gouache Lovers brush set. So if I head into my Gouache Lovers, my favorite brush is the Streaky Semi-Transparent brush. You probably already know that if you've seen any of my Gouache tutorials. So I'm going to be using this brush again for this project. And I have the free Enchanted Evergreen color palette loaded in, which you can grab the link to this right in the video description. We're going to start by painting our poinsettia first. So the big red flower right in the middle. And I'm going to grab the red color for that and I'm going to create a brand new layer and for this one I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to paint around the entire flower so all the edges I'm going to fill the entire thing up with this red because I want this flower to stand out more than anything else in the composition. I want all the attention going to this flower first. So this one will make everything that I paint more opaque and this is going to be on a dark colored background so it'll pop off the screen that much more. So that is the reason that I'm putting a base layer on this one. I don't usually do this with other elements because I love the streakiness that this brush has and it makes it feel very painterly but with this flower specifically because I want it to stand out so much I decided to try a base layer and I really liked it. I have the base all painted in, so now we need to make some decisions about what we're going to paint next. I'm going to turn off this base color temporarily, and we need to talk about the order that we're going to paint everything in. So the first thing you want to do is look at your element and decide which elements are on top and which elements are behind, kind of the order that everything's laying on top of each other. And when I look at this, I see these petal leaves are the topmost ones right here. So these ones are going to be the brightest because they're in the front. And then I have these ones which are kind of the mid-range. I'm going to use this color as my mid-range color so I can leave those alone. And then anything beneath it is going to get progressively darker because it's getting further away. There's more elements on top which are casting shadows. So it makes more sense that they become darker. With that in mind, let's begin with our lightest colored elements and then work our way back. Because these top elements are going to be lighter in color than the red, and I don't have that in my palette, I've got this really light pink, but I just want to go a shade lighter. I'm going to grab the red, and then in my color wheel right here, I'm in the disk view. All you have to do is bring this a little closer to where the white is, and I'll get a lighter shade. And you can kind of test on top, like that one's not different enough. I want it to be even lighter still, so you can tell 
that there's an obvious difference, but not too drastic. So you gotta kind of play around with it. That one feels really good to me. So I'm gonna create a brand new layer, turn off this red layer, and now we're just going to paint in the topmost elements. I've got those in. Let's preview how that looks. And now we can begin working our way back. So I mentioned before that these elements are going to be my mid-range and you can just toggle these on as you need to see where you're at with things. Because I painted this giant base layer, it works a little differently for this one than the next flower we're going to paint in. I'm going to move now because these ones are my mid-range to the ones that are behind. After these light pink ones, I'm going to have this one, this one, I'm going to include this one with it, this, this, this one's gonna be behind, and this one's gonna be behind. So I'm just going to do these two a little bit darker. I'm going to create a brand new layer, drag it underneath the layer that I just painted. Now we've gotta to go to our default red and make it a little bit darker. Now I'm gonna paint this one. And this one. Let's see how this looks. I'm going to go even darker still, so create a brand new layer right underneath the layer that you just painted, and we gotta bring it down even more now. So I'm going towards black straight down. Turn off the base, and the next ones are going to be this one, and this one. This one's going to be behind this one, so I've gotta do this one next. Once you do this a few times, it'll go a lot faster. I completely acknowledge that this gets a little complicated the first couple of times you do it, but I promise you do this a few times and you will have it down. You just kind of look at what's overlapping what, because this one's overlapping this one, this one's overlapping this one, and then this one's being overlapped by this one. So that's kind of how you decide how dark to paint it. So we just have two that are the super dark ones, and then this will be all done. I'm going to create a brand new layer right underneath the one that we just did, and then make this even darker still, and we'll paint these last two in. Let's turn on our base now and see how that looks. Everything feels good. You may see a few areas where the base layer is poking through where your leaf layer is, and you can do one of two things. Actually, you can do three things. You could either erase the base layer or smudge it to push it. You could paint in extra of the color that's on top. Like I still have the dark selected, so I can just paint over this right here, or you just leave it. If you like how it looks or if it doesn't bother you, just leave it alone. Nothing says you gotta get rid of it. Like I really don't mind it there, so I'm just gonna leave it. So we've got our poinsettia base pretty much wrapped up now, and now it's just adding in the final details. And you just need to decide how many details you'd like to put in here. I'm going to put in the stamen next, and then I'm gonna show you how I add shadows really quickly to simulate depth and just kind of make it pop forward a little bit more. And then we're going to add that detail to the leaves slash petals. So let's put in our stamen right now. I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top. I'm going to grab my lightest pink from the pre-made palette. And let's turn off the base layer, that way I can see where I'm painting. And these are just little dots in here, little circles. And turn that base back on. And now we can add in the petal details. I'm going to come right above the top petal layer, create a brand new layer, grab the default red, change the blend mode to multiply. We're going to reduce the opacity after we do this, that way it, it all jives a lot better. I'm going to turn off all of our petals right now, that way we can see where we need to add this. And I'm just going to draw straight on top of it. And you can follow it as closely or as loosely as you would like. If you don't want to add these in, you don't have to do that either. Totally up to you. I'm coming down to about 35%. And then I can also see like if there's any extra ones I want to pop in here. I can do that too. I have all my details in now, and then the last thing I wanna to add to this, I promise this is like the longest part of this whole bouquet, is adding in some depth. But I wanted you to see if you wanted to add in depth too, a really quick and easy way to do it. I'm going to create a brand new layer 
beneath the stamen element, so right above the layer that we just painted in. And I'm once again going to change the blend mode to multiply, and I'm still using the default red that came from our original color palette. And we also have to decide where our light source is coming from. If our light source is coming straight on top, we're going to get different shadows cast in different directions versus if we have a light source coming in from the side, it's going to be cast a little bit differently. I generally have my light sources come a little top right of center. So kind of like around here. I don't want them to be so intense. So I'm not coming like straight here, but I'm up a little bit. So they're a little bit shorter, but there's still a defined direction that I'm casting those shadows. So for this, to give you an example, as it's coming down, this petal leaf is going to cast a shadow right here. Now I'm painting all these shadows on a top layer. So if I overlap this, it's going to color on top of the element. This is a really fast way of doing shadows. So it's just something you need to be aware of when you're painting. Just be aware of where you're, you're painting your shadow, the edge, because you will overlap elements with this method. And then this one's also being cast down, but I can overlap all of these elements at once. And this brush has pressure sensitivity, so the harder I press down on my stylus, the larger the line I'm going to get. I'm just gonna paint these ones in. You can see I overlap, so you can erase, you can smudge to push it back, whatever you wanna do here. Correct the edge. And then even these stamens, stamen elements, I like adding some depth behind them. It makes them come forward a bit more because they are a top element, so that's important. And then this leafy element, even though it's the same color, this will define it as being separate. And then this one's going to have a smaller shadow. It's going to get thicker as it gets towards the bottom. A nice way to learn more about shadows, if this seems a little overwhelming right now, I totally get it because it took me a while to figure this out too. Look at existing bouquets and it's really easy to just be caught up with how pretty a bouquet is. But start evaluating where the shadows are hitting, where the light source is coming from, how big the shadows get, what direction they go in. You can learn so much by real bouquets, just looking at them and learning from them. And even if you wanna trace on top and recreate the shadows yourself, you'll learn so, so much. I actually really like how dark these are on here. We can reduce the opacity a little bit if we wanna see if lightening it how that feels. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna go over 75% opacity here. And now we need to group all of our flower, our poinsettia, layers together, and I'll label this one. Let's now turn off our outline and we can get a nice idea of how this is coming together and hopefully this gets you excited for the rest of the bouquet. I promise the rest of this will go much faster. That was just, we added a lot of detail to that one because it is our hero flower within the bouquet. Next, we're going to focus on the pink flower. I always like doing the flowers first and getting them out of the way. And then the foliage goes just super fast after that. So let's focus on the pink one next. I'm going to create a brand new layer above our composition stamp. We want our poinsettia to sit on top and be the hero so everything else is going to sit behind it. I'm going to create a brand new layer and this time for the base we're going to use the default pink and then we'll work in a very similar fashion where we decide what's going to be in front and what's going to be behind but now we also have to consider that the poinsettia is going to be casting a shadow on top of our pink flower. If you want to keep doing the shadows, it's just another thing to consider. Nothing says you have to put in shadows though. If you're not comfortable doing that yet, don't put them in. It still looks really beautiful even if it's flat. And speaking of the flat style, if you want to learn more about casting shadows and creating other flower bouquets in a similar style, my Flat Florals and Procreate course will guide you through the entire process and you'll get the extended license to my Bouquet Maker brush set along with enrollment as well. Let's take a look at this pink flower. We've got some edges. You can see the edges of the petals are kind of folding up. So that's another consideration we need to make as we're painting and those ones will always generally speaking be lighter than the petals themselves because the default pink color in my palette is pretty light to begin with i'm just going to start painting in some of these edges that are brighter Now let's talk about the petals. These petals are opened up right in the center so they're going to get hit with a lot of light these three right here this one is probably going to be my brightest, but this one's going to be a very close second. And then this one is still in a similar range. So I'm going to make this one a little bit brighter than my default. So I'm going to 
just brighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to create a brand new layer right beneath the petal fold layer. Just because this one's just opening itself right up to the light, I want this one to stand out. And then we can paint this one right next to it similarly. Now I'm going to start moving further back. So this one will be next. I'm going to create a brand new layer right underneath that one. So this next color is a little tricky to get right because we want it to be a little bit darker than the shade we just chose, but it's so close to ending up in the black territory where it's going to get really muddy. I'm going to return to the original pink and just move it down a bit here to make it richer in color, which will inherently make it a little bit darker. And we can also paint in this petal over here. And let's take care of both of these as well. And then this is part of my eucalyptus, but this is a back petal. And that I think is part of my eucalyptus too. So we just need to do one more darker petal after this. Before we move too much further, I'm going to turn off our outline just to see how my edges look. You can see I'm coming kind of close and I'm leaving some white gaps around here, which you can leave if you want it to be more of that painterly style, which I actually really do like. But this gap is a little too big for me. So I'm going to come to that layer, this lighter colored layer, and I'm just going to smudge this out a little bit. You could also paint in an additional stroke. I'm going to use the Streaky Semi-Transparent brush as my smudge brush, and I can just push the color right to the edge here and anywhere else I see that I could close a gap. I just don't want to bring too much attention to areas where I don't want people to be focusing. And there we go. That's looking really good so far. I'm going to turn my outline back on, paint in this darker petal. So I need to create a brand new layer right underneath the one that we just created and make this just a little bit darker. Let's paint in our stamen now. Stamen's going to go at the very top of all of our layers. I'm going to change my color to the gold. So the center part right here is going to be the gold. And then these little lines, the filaments around it, I'm going to make a little bit darker. I'm going to keep it on the same layer though because we have some pretty basic shapes here, which I won't mind redrawing if I have to. Turn off the stamp just to see. That all looks good. I do have a giant edge right here that I need to correct, so I'm going to smudge just like we did before. And now we can add in our shadow layer. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top. And if I just use the pink color, it's not really dark enough when I change it to multiply. You're not going to see it as well. So I actually like going just a little bit darker than, than this one. When you have light colors that you're changing to multiply, they're not going to be intense as like a mid-range color or a darker color. So that's why I do that. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply and we're going to follow the same process as we did before. Our light is casting this way. So I'm going to get a shadow where the poinsettia is overlapping my elements. So I like taking care of that first because if I don't, <laughs> I've definitely forgotten to do it before. So I want to make sure. I have this folded edge. So this is going to get a little shadow around here. I have this back petal that's going to get a pretty good one right there. I'm going to move the shadow layer above the stamen because there are parts that are going to be in shadow on the stamen because of the poinsettia casting a shadow there. So this one's going to be a little bit different because of that. I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer. This one we're going to reduce quite a bit more. I'm going to come down to about 45% on that. And now we can paint in all of our foliage and the foliage part goes really fast. So let's group all of our pink flower layers together. And I'm just going to label this one pink. Create a brand new layer right beneath that group. Turn on your stamp layer. And now you can kind of just choose what you would like to do. The most important part is when you choose an element, if there's multiple components to that element, like I have the berries here and I have the branch, you want to make sure 
that that's all you're painting on those layers. I'm going to have a berry layer. I'm going to have a branch layer. I'm going to group them together. That way I can reorder them if I need to later. If this one's in front of something or behind something, then I can just grab the group and just drag it beneath it or on top of it. It makes editing and rearranging so fast and so easy. So let's do this one first. I'm going to grab my pink and just put in little dots for all the berries. I'm going to do flat color for all the foliage just to move this along. And I, I like doing that where I don't add a ton of detail to the foliage because I want all the attention going on my flowers. So there won't be any shadows cast here. Everything's going to be flat and everything will still look really cohesive because we're doing it in the same style. We're using the same brushes, same color palette. We're just leaving out the extra shadows on these ones. But you could add them in if you wanted to. You definitely do that. I've got all those berries. I'm going to create a brand new layer, drag it underneath the berry layer, change my color to the gold, and draw in all of my branches. You may need to reduce the size of your brush or just draw really lightly because this is pressure sensitive, so it'll affect your brush size. You could also reduce the opacity of your stamp layer so you can see what you're painting on top a little better. I'm going to do that. I'm going to reduce this down to about 50%. Make sure I'm covering all the areas I need to. Sometimes the black can trick you a little bit where you think you painted something in but you didn't. Berry branch is done but there is a leaf connected to it so I need to add this to an additional layer. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the berry layer. I'm going to grab my light green and just add in this leaf right here. And that's all set now so I can group this call it berry branch. Let's keep working our way around the bouquet. So I'm going to do this eucalyptus branch next. And the eucalyptus, if I turn off my berry branch, is behind the berry branch. So create a brand new layer right underneath it. And for this one, we're going to use the mid blue color and you're just going to trace it. So nothing crazy about this one. This one will go really fast. If you'd like to learn more about painting digital gouache in Procreate, I have an entire course called Gouache Botanicals in Procreate. You'll learn four different styles of painting with digital gouache brushes, so I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description. That one's all done. We can turn off our stamp and kind of see how everything's coming together create a brand new layer. This branch doesn't really matter if it's above or below this eucalyptus. So I'm just going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my gold again and just trace over it. There's a few more branches over here, so I don't want to miss these ones. The next one is going to be this long leafy element. This long leafy element is behind my branch, so I need to create a brand new layer right underneath that. And for this one, we're going to use this lighter blue color. That one's all set. We've got this eucalyptus element next, and we're going to do the same color as we use for the other one. So the medium blue. I'm going to create a brand new layer right behind this one because it is sitting behind it. Hopefully you're seeing how fast this foliage process goes compared to the flowers for sure. You can keep in mind once you put in your effort and spend your time making the flowers look really beautiful, the rest of it just goes super fast after that. That's why I like doing the flowers first because once I have those done then I know like I'm home free. I just need to paint in my foliage and I'm good to go. The next one is this one right here. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, this one, doesn't matter where it goes. I'm just going to put it above my stamp layer and grab the light blue color again for this. I do have this leaf that's behind and I want it, I don't want it to look like I have like this H showing up. So I'm, I am going to paint that one a little bit darker just to not have those all merged together which is a really easy thing to do. We've already done it before in our flowers. We're going to create a brand new layer right underneath it, make this one a little bit darker, and then paint in that one. And I'll just add a little bit more depth and consistency between your flowers and your foliage. And then you'll want to group those two together. And I can just label this one like bottom leaf. Next up is this these berries right here. I'm going to create a brand new layer above the bottom leaf group. And for this one, I don't want it to compete too much with the bright red here. So I'm going to grab this color red, but I'm going to make it a little richer. So I'm going to move it to the right so it gets more saturated because I don't want it to 
blend too much in with this one that's going to be next to. So I'll just differentiate it a little bit. Let's move on to the rest of these leaves. I'm going to make them the same color, this lighter color. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the bottom leaf group, grab that light blue, and paint these in. Next up is this eucalyptus branch. I'm going to make this one gold because we've got a lot of blue happening right here and I think it'll break it up really well and I'll get that symmetry between this branch that's in the upper right and this one which is in the bottom left. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. It doesn't matter the order here. Because it's not obvious that it's sitting above or below the two elements that are next to it. So I'm just going to create a brand new layer, grab my gold, and paint this in. Next one is this leafy element. I'm going to create a brand new layer and grab my mid blue again. And you'll notice I do have quite a few overlaps happening right here. So I'll want to be aware of that. There are two things that I can do. I can either paint these leaves a darker color or I can add in just shadows where the overlap is happening. And I think if I painted it a darker color, it'll be too weird because I'm going like every other one and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to paint them all the same color and then I'll add in some manual shadows. For these manual shadows, I'm going to turn off the painted layer, create a brand new layer right above it, change the blend mode to multiply. I'm using the same exact color and I'm just going to add in the lines where the overlap is happening. All right, let's see what that looks like when I turn this on. It's pretty dark, so let's reduce the intensity. I'm coming down to 75% and I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm going to grab my smudge brush, which has the streaky semi-transparent, and I'm gonna blend this so it's a little softer here because I don't wanna bring too much attention to these, but I do wanna show that there's a separation happening between these elements. The last element is this eucalyptus, and then we're basically done. And this one's going to be the light blue again. We're going to create a brand new layer right above the stamp layer. Grab the light blue. Let's paint it in. There is one leaf back here I didn't want to forget about. I'm just going to make these two look a little more separate than they are right now. Turn off the stamp. The last thing is adding in a background. If you don't like the white and you want to kind of explode forward a little bit, just add a dark background. And we have one in our default palette. So I'm going to tap on background color and choose this first color right here. And that's the dark green. And you can see how pretty this looks. So there's our bouquet. I am noticing that I've got some areas in the pink where I didn't smudge as much as maybe I would have liked to, and I can go in and clean those up. So I'm going to do that now, and then I'll be right back. Our bouquet is now complete, so I want to show you one last thing, which is how to save it as a transparent background graphic. That way you can place it on any stationery you'd like. So in order to do that, all you have to do is turn off the background color layer and then go to your wrench, share, and choose PNG. And then just hit save image and that will save it to your camera roll. So now you have that graphic ready to use and ready to place on any other canvas that you have within Procreate. So there is our winter gouache bouquet using the winter bouquet maker and gouache brushes. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.